uh, getting straight to the point, I'm here to ask for your support. All right. I'm like that. You know, so, uh, I'm not trying to uh, game or uh, give you a line. I'm just here to ask for your support. All right. Now, um, I, I'm not, and, and I've been trying to figure out what would I say to you after I ask you for your support, right? Uh, and and, uh, and the one thing that kept coming to my mind was how interesting the world is today, and particularly. Uh, uh, this election in Cleveland, but I imagine it's a, the same kind of thing that will happen all over this country, and that is everybody's concerned about poor people now. <laughs> Everybody is uh, is uh, the champion of the least of us. All right now. And the only question I have to ask is, where have you been? Where have you been? <laughs> and, let, and let me uh, say to you that. Uh, uh, Reverend Matthews is talking about continuity and, 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 and having some uh, consistency in whatever you do. And, and I, what I've decided to do is really to talk about me, and then I'll leave enough time for questions and answers, and then we can talk about the issue. But to me right now, we need to know uh, who a person is. Who, are, who is this person? if you're going to give them some support. And I don't want you supporting me because I'm the mayor of the city of Cleveland. All right. I really don't. I don't want you to support me because of a piece of literature. I don't. I want you to support me because you believe that I am the right person right now for this job to do what is necessary. Now, so I'm not going to, uh, uh, I'll answer your question. But I want to tell you a little bit about me, so you get to know me, for those of you who don't know me, and you only know me from a distance. Now, I'm born and raised in Cleveland. Born and raised in Cleveland, and, and a lot of times people ask me, where do you get the accent from? They think I'm from Alabama, Georgia, Mississippi, or someplace like that. And so, uh, so I, I say, I say because uh, where I was born and raised, I was raised around people who came from Alabama, Georgia, <laughs> Mississippi, right? And, and even though I'm born in Cleveland, I, 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 I spent, since 1960, I spent all of my life in the central neighborhood, where I still live on 38%. Right. And, and, and the first part of my life, when I was real, real young, I lived up on 83rd and Kinsley. All right, now. 83rd and Kinsley. Then we moved down on 38th and, and Central. So, and, and I can remember the tail end of segregation. I can remember the tail end of segregation. And I can remember when we were all in one spot. And, and, and people came, when they came to Cleveland, that's the spot they went to. That's why the congressman, uh, Stokes, Mayor, uh, Mayor Stokes, uh, Judge Flinney, all the different judges, Judge Kimmel, all of them came up out of Central. Because that's where we were. And, and I can remember that there was a house on every block. And there were grocery stores and, and nightclubs and, and hotels and movie theaters and, and beauty shops, barber shops, uh, a five and ten, all up and down Central. Uh, we called it Quincy back then, now it's Community College. 55th Street, Cedar, all of it. And I'm not just talking about one, I'm talking about many. And I can remember that as children, Everybody went to school, whether you were the child of someone on welfare, the child of someone who was professional, the child of somebody who was a business person. We all went to school together. And so we all knew each other. So there was no, no distinction between us, and there was a culture that bound us together. I remember that. And then here comes uh, integration. And here comes the rise, here comes urban renewal, here comes all those different things that ultimately resulted in the busting up of the community. All right. And the attempt to undermine a culture of the people. And now what we have, we have those who are able to go somewhere else or chose to go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Their children and grandchildren are very educated, real bright young people. And they're living places, they're professionals, they're business people. And what was left behind in Central, where I still live, is the poorest of the poor. 
the Lisa. And the people who moved away and their, and, and their children and grandchildren, they are afraid of the masses. And the masses don't trust them. So here we are, almost in a, in a bifurcated world now, trying to come together to address the issues and the needs of a people Mm -hmm. But we can't even see eye to eye on each other. We don't oh. either trust each other or we scared of one another. Uh -huh. All right? All right. So I'm not going to run in between that to manipulate that because this election, and everyone is talking about it, what are you going to do for the poor? What are you going to do for the least of us? Again, I ask where you've been. <laughs> I'm on 38th and Central, still there. Right. All right. Since 1960. So then, you know, I went mm. to Cleveland Public Schools. And when I went to the school, uh, uh, I didn't do too well. I was no different than kids today. Uh, I, was all, I was almost 20 years old when I graduated from high school. <laughs> I, I failed so many times. <laughs> but primarily in the third grade. Right. The third grade. Now, I'll tell you how that happened. Let me tell you. Uh, give, me, give me a minute now. Uh, Let me tell you how that happened. <laughs> I, what, I, what I would do, I'm, I'm still a lazy reader. I, once something captures my imagination and attention, I'll just go through it. But I'm a lazy reader. You know, I'd rather look at TV, right? And, and so, and so, and so here it is. I, w I would look at pictures. I would look at pictures, just like these pictures on here. So I'd get a book. I'd go to the library and get the biggest book I could find that had the most pictures. It always wound up being a history book. And I would go page by page. I would just flip the page, page by page, and I would look at the picture, and I would read the caption. I would read the context or the content of, of, of the book. So I always got A's in history. But when it came to any other subject matter, and, and it came to reading and all that stuff, I just couldn't, I just couldn't get there, right? So anyway, I'm almost 20 years old when I graduate from high school. And then I get drafted in the Army. Uh, I go to the Army, I go to Vietnam, I come back, uh, I, I worked, I went to Max Hayes, I was in the machine shop, so I had a job in the machine shop. I wound up leaving there, uh, uh, and the real reason why I left there is because I was taking this uh, computer programming class, and the programming class is when you had those the, the cards with the holes in them. Yeah, and, and they had the, uh, the, the computer was big as a copying machine. <laughs> and so you do the programming, right? right. And you say, so I'm, I'm thinking, you know, I'm trying to better myself. So I, I take this uh, proprietary course in, in computer programming. So I go to the people at the company where I work, and I told them, I said, look, I'm, I'm in this computer programming class, and I want to go up to your computer department. You know what they told me? They told me, uh, you know, it's amazing how people looking out for you when they take you back. Uh, they said, well, you know what, that, you know, you make more money on the floor. <laughs> you make more money on the floor. <laughs> you know, you're out there working on the floor on the machines. You know, and I don't think it's in your best interest to do it. You know, I knew what they were telling me. Uh, so I quit. Uh, so I quit, I wound up selling insurance, I wound up, eventually I wound up in a job that paid me $1.75 an hour for shipping and receiving, and that's what I do, unload and load trucks and, and, and move pallets around and things like that. And so in 1973, after running around in the streets, being unemployed, almost homeless, all this other kind of stuff, I eventually met my wife, we got married, I said, I need to do something other than running around. So then, now here it is, I, 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 I wind up working in this factory, dollar seventy-five cents an hour, and I decided I'm going to go to community college. All right. Not because I wanted a degree, because I didn't know what a degree was. I had no clue what a degree was. I wanted to go there because I actually wanted to learn something. I wanted to learn something. And so I, I went there, and to show you how, 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 how ignorant I was to, to, to college life, I went there, 
And I walked on to the campus down there, a uh, uh, metro campus down where I live, try to see on community college. I went there and I saw somebody, and I, and I didn't know nothing about admission or enrollment. I, asked, I said, where do I sign up? <laughs> where do I sign up? And so they pointed me to this building, right? So I went into the building and I pretty much asked somebody in there,